the beauty. Isn't she pretty? She's gorgeous. If you don't know what the Hasselblad 500 series camera is, you might be familiar with that design of the camera. It is, to me, it's instantly recognizable. You know, a couple of years before I actually ended up getting this camera, I was very aware of its existence. I always thought that Hasselblads are just way too expensive and I would never be able to afford one. Basically, I had no interest in actually getting it, but I always admired the way that it looked because it's like a stunning uh, looking camera. I know I haven't spoken about film photography at all in this channel and that's definitely going to change over the next couple months. Uh, basically, you know, about a year ago, I ended up getting some vintage lenses. If you're familiar with the Leica R series lenses, those are the ones that I got. After I got those lenses, a friend of mine started getting into film photography and I was curious and I already knew I had vintage glass. So I was like, let me look up, you know, what cameras I could get um, that would be compatible. I ended up picking up a Leica Flex SL. It's a 35 millimeter SLR camera and it was great. Um, it taught me a lot. It was also an all mechanical camera and very satisfying to use. However, I did want to take the step up from 35 millimeter to 120, which is eventually what I did with this Hasselblad. I do plan to get a 35 millimeter camera again in the future. I no longer have the Leica Flex SL. I actually sold it. Um, in part to actually be able to get this camera. But a lot of the reasons why I actually use the Leica Flex is similar reasons to why I use this Hasselblad. So this is the exact model that I have. Um, they have the Hasselblad 500CM, which has interchangeable uh, matte screens. It also is a bit newer, but mainly the biggest difference between the 500CM and this, the 500C, is the fact that you can change the acute map screen or you can actually change just the matte screen and put an acute map or something with a grid or anything like that. This one, you cannot do that. However, uh, this specific model that I actually got already has a screen installed with a micro prism, which is pretty cool because it's not common to have that installed on the original 500C. So that is another reason why I ended up getting this because I did get a better screen than most 500 C's and I personally think it's invaluable because it does allow me to get critical focus and I'm pretty much rocking an all old style uh, Hasselblad because I don't even have the A12 backs I have the I believe they're called the 12 backs which essentially means that you can't just wind it on and it'll automatically stop you have to flip this down and you essentially wind right there until you see the first frame come up on the backing paper of the film. And that is when you know you can reset the counter and start shooting. So it's a bit more inconvenient. Again, the backs are cheaper, so it wasn't that big of a deal for me. I also have a C-series lens. So this is the 80 millimeter f2.8 Zeiss planar. Um, the T-Star, so it's not the chrome nose one, so it does have a little bit better coatings. However, it's still the older model, so whenever you move this aperture ring, it does kind of like move cohesively with the uh, shutter speed, and then you have to basically um, detach them so that you can move them independently. Not a huge deal, but something to note. I actually don't use this camera with the waist level finder. That's a really popular way of using this camera. However, I didn't really see it as being practical for me because I don't necessarily want to be worrying about like trying to get accustomed to the orientation of it all because everything is backwards when you look down in it. And personally, I also like the magnification that you get with the prism that allows me to get better critical focus because shooting this lens at 2.8 is still pretty shallow depth of field. Making sure my images are sharp is something I value more than looking down into the ground glass. Not to mention the waist level finder is quite expensive. And I know there's workarounds, but uh, again, I don't have it, but um, I don't mind it. I actually kind of like the way that it looks and the way that it functions. So one of the biggest debates that I think a lot of people have about using the 500 series camera is the fact that it is square format and in comparison to a lot of medium format film cameras out there, square format is kind of like the oddball 
you know, there are people who like it, but a majority of people feel like square images are limiting and, and most people prefer having a, you know, a bigger horizontal field of view. However, I see it as an opportunity to be creative with my images and it has forced me to think critically every single time I go out and shoot with it. Chris Chu's video, he made a great video about his uh, 500 series camera and he made a really good point talking about trying to make everything kind of look like an album cover. It's It could be quite challenging. I personally like the symmetrical look that square format has in comparison to something like a, you know, 35 millimeter. And I think that's a really great way of approaching photography with this camera. Just in case you were having a bad day. Let's, uh, let's make it better. Listen to this. Yes. It has probably one of the best sounding mechanical shutters I've ever heard in a camera. And, you know, bonus is that you don't need batteries. And I personally don't want to be worrying about stuff like that or having like an extra battery on me. So just like the Leica Flex, this is just a pick up and go camera. I can always rely on it. And you know, if something ever did happen to it, I actually know a place locally here that fixes Hasselblad's relatively easy. So it's definitely not a cheap camera, but I feel like the way that it's built is built to last essentially forever and you can service them. So uh, the price is justifiable for me, especially knowing that if something happens, I can get it serviced. Uh, something I don't personally use with the 500 series camera as of yet has been the sync at all speeds. I have not used uh, strobes or anything like that. So I personally don't have any experience in using that, but that is a main drawing point for this camera is really meant to be in a studio setting. So if you're looking for an analog camera that can sync uh, your strobe at up to 500th of a second, that is where something like this would come into play. Hasselblad traditionally has been a studio used camera. I don't use it in that way as of late, like I was saying. I do wanna try it out, but as far as I know, I have not used it in that setting, but it is essentially the king at doing studio photography. So if that's a no brainer for you, then you probably don't even need me explaining this to you. You already know that the Hasselblad is essentially the king for that. So uh, I have loved using it and here are some sample images expect to see more of this camera on this channel going forward. If you guys have any questions, please drop them in the comments. I probably didn't get to everything about this camera. Uh, I'm kind of just going off the top of my head in my personal experience. But if you have any questions about it, please let me know in the comments below. Yeah, it's been great, you know, talking to you guys. Yeah, it's been a long time. Be on the lookout for new videos. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll talk to you later.